welcome back. Today I'm going to share with you how I make my epoxy keychains that I embed with NFC chips. And those are little cards. You can see this white circle here on the screen. That is what is going to embed information and it is scannable through a cell phone. So the first thing I'm going to do is mix up some fast set epoxy. I mean, you can use regular epoxy for this. It doesn't matter, but I'm kind of in a hurry. So I want to get this all done in one day and I'm using CCDIY's, um, their fast set. And since that chip is white and you'll be able to see through the uh, keychain, I mixed a little bit of white acrylic paint in with my epoxy to make it a little more opaque. And then I also added my glitter to um, give it a little bit of sparkle. So then I just hit it with the heat gun and let it, um, let it flow nicely in the mold. And I added a little bit of extra glitter on top, some of the chunky, and then I need to just now that I'm done, I need to just let it set and wait till it gets a little tacky. I don't want to put the chip in it right away because it will sink. It's a chance it could sink to the bottom and I want to keep it in between the two layers. So now that I've let that set for a little bit, probably about an hour with the fast set, it doesn't take long. And now I'm just going to take my chip and I'm going to go ahead and embed it. So I'm just going to lay it on top and then it's just going to stick to that bottom layer. But you just don't want to push it way down in because you want to keep it between the two layers. So I guess now is a good time for me to say this, that before you embed your chip, I would highly suggest that you use the tools, the app that um, I'll show you in the next video how I actually program them. But I suggest using the app and making sure that you can write to the chip and that it's readable. I mean, you wouldn't want to go through this hassle and then find out that for some reason that one particular chip might be defective. So far, I've not had that happen, but I always do this in advance just to make sure that I don't go through the process of using all my epoxy and making something that is never going to work. I do have a TikTok video showing you very quickly, you know, the basics of using this app to program these chips. And if I think about it, um, if, actually, if I remember, I will post it in the description so that you can look at that before I get to the longer YouTube tutorial on using that app to do your programming. So while I was talking about the uh, about the chip and the importance of doing the programming prior to embedding it, I was adding my second layer of epoxy. I was using the same fast set that I used before and I just, um, you know, added my white paint and the white glitter mixed it up. Like I said, everything that I did before and then pour that on evenly, used my heat gun to get it nice and smooth and then topped it off with the chunky glitter that I'm using for this keychain. And you know, you wanna pay attention to how the chunky is going on because your design or your personalization will go over top of this. So you're gonna be able to see this on the top. So now you'll just let your mold set until it hardens up, depending on the type of epoxy you're using. Again, this is CCDIY fast set, and it usually hardens within a couple hours. So you can take it out of the mold, you know, pretty rather quickly. Um, one thing I'm going to say about these molds, I purchased them from Amazon and they're the perfect size for me. I don't like the giant keychains, but this mold honestly is crap. Um, it's not smooth. Sometimes the epoxy sticks inside of it. I, I don't know what the deal is, but, um, I, you just have to work with it, but it's a good size and that's why I'm still using it. So now that I've taken it out of the mold and the top is a little bit, um, uneven, some of the glitter is still sticking up. So I'm going to use this UV resin and just put a light coat over top of it and this is going to seal my glitter in so that when I go to put my um, vinyl over it I'm not going to be left with dents or you know ugly imperfections in it I want it to go on smooth 
So you've been watching me make the white keychain, but um, off camera I had also used the rest of my epoxy to make this pink um, keychain for a gift for somebody. So I do not have anything that I need to put on the white one right now. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up this video using the pink one. And this will be a double sided, um, a double sided personalization. So this is for a friend of my daughter's and I put her, um, I put her sorority letters on the front and then I'm going to go ahead and put her name on the back. So for the vinyl, I'm going to do a little bit of, you know, a mix between some reverse weeding and then some regular weeding. As you can see, I'm pulling out um, pieces of the vinyl right now and I'm using my favorite weeding tools, which happens to be a little pair of tweezers that I bought like at Marshall's for a couple dollars and this other little instrument that kind of reminds me of a dental pick. And I purchased that at SK Houston and um, I have two of them. One came from SK Houston and the other one at Join Us up in Katy. They're like $5 tools, but honestly, of all the different things I have and all of, all of the other things that I've purchased, these are probably my favorite two tools that I use to weed out the vinyl. So now that I have that done, I'm gonna go ahead and transfer it over. And then I kept the circle on here just as a guide so that I could kind of get it straight and it should go right over top of the circle. So after I do that, then this is my reverse weeding part that I'm going to take off all that excess now and pull out those little pieces. So once I finished applying the vinyl and did the weeding, then I'm ready to seal in the... Um, seal in the sorority letters and I'm using a UV resin this is this will be linked down in the description also it I purchased it from Amazon and I'm just gonna put a nice even coat over top of it I don't want it super super thick but you know I just want it I just want it to be nice and even and try to get rid of any bubbles that might be you know that might be in the epoxy because you do get a you do get bubbles in UV resin too. So I'll just go ahead and keep adding a little bit at a time if I need to, make sure I get I don't have any uneven spaces or little divots or um, dimples in the epoxy. And then I'm using this Dulux UV light. This flashlight again came from Amazon. It will also be in the description and I'm going to go over that until my epoxy set and I will probably, you didn't see this part that I had already taken it after I finished that I took it outside and let it set in the sun for a little bit while I was busy doing something else and now I've come back and I need to even out the back so I have used, I told you earlier that that mold is not very good so it doesn't leave things nice and smooth. So I did a quick sanding on it and then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the back with, um, with the young lady's name. And I've already, I already did my weeding on that and I'm ready to place it. So I'm just going to use the grid lines on my cutting mat to help me line this up and keep it as straight as I possibly can. So once I have my vinyl placed, I'll go ahead and take my transfer tape off and get my little tools out and pull out any of those leftover pieces that, um, that I didn't weed out to start with. Sometimes small letters like this, like the insides of like the M's and um, even the insides of some of the closed letters, it's just easier to do a reverse weeding and to pull those pieces off after you place it where it's supposed to go rather than try to do it beforehand so anyway so the end last thing that needs to be done is the back has to be sealed so again i'm going to use that uv resin give it a nice even coat and use my little um, silicone stir um, stirring stick here and i'll go ahead and get it all the way you know get it all the way to the edges and make sure it's nice and even and try not to have any bubbles in it or you know anything else any um, 
any dips or uneven spaces or like uneven places in the epoxy. So once I get that on, then I use my little flashlight and go over that a little bit. And then again, I'll take, I took this outside and let it cure. Sometimes I put things in my little UV sanitizer, the phone soap. If you've looked at any of my other videos, you saw me using that. But um, if it's nice outside, I'll just take it outside and let it set in the sun while I'm doing something else. So as soon as all of this is finished, then I just add my hardware. And I like these little, um, uh, these little uh, triangles to add to the top to hold the, um, to hold the keychain in place. So the last step to this is again, just adding my hardware. So I, um, put the little keychain on, I use this, uh, this triangle clip to hold it on to the keychain itself. And then I use one of the, um, little tassels with a, um, with a jump ring. So at this point, if you hadn't already done it, if you didn't do this prior to starting your keychain, um, once you got all the hardware on and finished everything else up, then the next thing I would do is program the chip that's inside. But like I said earlier in the video, I would suggest that you do your programming before you put your chip in. And that way you know that, you know, whatever, website you program into it, your social media, um, anything else like that, that you would have that was a scannable, um, a scannable link that you make sure those work. And if you're watching this video before I get to the second part where I show you how to program the chips, then you can check out the TikTok video that I've already posted. It's not very, it's not in depth. It's pretty quick. It's TikTok, but it will give you an idea of how you go about programming the chip so that they will link to your social media or your websites or whatever it is that you're using. So on this keychain, this was a gift for somebody. So I didn't want to put my own social media or any of my own information on somebody else's keychain. So I just did a generic, um, I just did a generic link to um, Google. So whenever you read this with a phone, it's going to take you to just Safari to the Google homepage. And, um, you know, this was what I use to make sure this is typically what I do to make sure that the chip is working before I start using it. So I'm going to show you next how I do that. It works with the same technology as your, um, your Apple, um, Apple pay. So you just take your phone, open it, touch it to the top, and you can see that it brought up the link just like you would be reading a QR code. And then there's Google.